With our technical difficulties, we've decided not to share this uh, last video with you because you can't really hear it. But we'll post it on Facebook this afternoon because I think it's important for you to have an opportunity to see this particular program. It's a program that's being offered at a school that's called uh, Don't Dine, Al Dine Alone. And it's a program that these kids started when they realized that different kids at school were eating lunch alone. And uh, one person had the experience that it was, um, that, that they had that experience when they came to their school and they decided to start a program. This kid ends up leaving the football team to start running this program. And it's a program where a school has committed that nobody at school will eat alone. And so uh, stop by the Facebook page this afternoon. Mary's going to try to get that up for us there. Um, and I want because I want to make sure that you have an opportunity to see it. Today our text is a simple one. It's part of the I am statements. So Jesus has um, eight I am statements in, uh, in the Gospel of John. And this one I just want to bring out today. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This past week, the Stark family celebrated uh, Doug's mom. And uh, as part of the stories they were sharing about her life, there was this story of a famous quote that she had. She used to say, in our family, food should only be reserved for special, special occasions, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All oh, opportunities for special occasions. I have not been able to get that idea out of my mind all week long, and especially since we were away for about 10 days and we've made our way back into the schedule. And, and I'm sometimes not sure if my schedule is running me or if I'm running my schedule. And when, when it is, you eat on the run and you move and you go really fast. It seems like the time that we had away, those 10 days, is moving further, further away. And I want to keep that experience in my heart. Now, Andrew and I went to England a couple weeks ago for uh, his daughter's wedding, the last one. Yay! Uh, um, yeah, I didn't have kids. Wow, that's expensive. Anyway, um, so we had the last wedding, and uh, that was an amazing meal. It was a wonderful celebration. We gathered with the whole family. We had a Scottish Kaylee, men wore skirts. It was a fascinating, wonderful experience. And it was a sacred moment to be there when, when uh, his daughter uh, and Ben joined together in marriage. Not only did we have that special celebration, but we had this other celebration because we were able to have a meal with our grandchildren. Now, we talked to them pretty much on a weekly basis uh, via FaceTime, but we were actually able to sit at table and witness Matthew, the three-year-old's, perfect manners. He's working on perfect manners and how careful he was to make sure that he used his fork while his sister, the baby, was just spaghetti sauce everywhere. I mean, it was sacred. It was a sacred moment to witness um, their parents and how their parents take care of them. And, and to just have a meal together was so amazing. We had Sunday meal at the Holmes house with all the grown Holmes boys. And I could just imagine what their house was like when their dad was a, a minister and they were growing up and we all had our little um, beef and Yorkshire pudding and all the fixings. And we shared in a wonderful meal and I was able to hear some wonderful stories of the boys growing up. And there was just something about stepping out of the ordinary and 5,000 miles away that made me pause to say, this is sacred. This is important. We have Andrew's mom and dad, and they can tell me stories about the boys growing up. We have grandchildren. We can experience them at the age of three and one. This is special, and I had better pay attention. 
We also had an opportunity to have a meal with our friend Fiona Holmes, uh, Fiona Thompson. Fiona Thompson and her husband David, very, very good friends of ours, and unfortunately David died last year. And uh, it was the first time that, that I've been in their home since David died. And I have to tell you, I never realized what a massive presence that man had. He was a minister, and, and he just had this great presence, and he kind of took over a room. And that first time we sat at their table, and that seat was empty, and how sad I was, and how the tears came for all of us. For that one sacred moment, how much we missed him. And then it seemed as though through prayer and through time and through food, we were able to recognize, no, the spirit of David was still around. And soon I got to know David's wife in a different way that I'd never known much about her before because David talked all the time. Fiona was finally able to talk. I was able to hear a little bit about her life and about her family and it was just this sacred moment where I said, this is important. This is important. Well, friends, then I came home. And something happened to sacred time. It turned into calendar time yet again. And it turned into all the things you have to do. I mean, right out, hit the grounds Friday running after we made our way back here on, on Thursday evening. And just go, go, go. And suddenly sacred time is something that is in another country. But I don't believe that to be true. I believe what Jesus is saying to us in this text today is indeed that each and every moment we have an opportunity to have I am, to have the presence of God with us. Now, the presence of God is always with us, but indeed, when we recognize it, then it is part of us and part of the experience. Jesus says to us, I am the bread of life. Invite me to your table, invite me to your gatherings, invite me into your home. And when you do that, you will never hunger nor thirst again. Now, in a moment, we're going to share in Holy Communion. The Holy Communion table here at the Garden is open to all people. You don't have to be a Methodist. You don't have to be part of a church. You need only believe that Jesus is the bread of life, and through him, you'll never hunger nor thirst again. You need to only believe that his energy can give you, his spirit can give you what you need to overcome your sin or whatever it is that's challenging you, fill you so that you can go forth and face this conditional world with a power and an energy, a power and an energy that through a tiny piece of bread and a little bit of juice is the energy you need to never hunger nor thirst again. Now, how does Jesus do that? How does he do that? I think he does it through the likes of you and me. I think he reminds us that he is the bread of life, and until we take that bread of life in, until we take that spiritual experience in and take it out into a world where we still have hungry children, where we still have violence, where we still have challenges, where people are not welcome, we take that energy, then that bread of life can have an impact on those situations. I believe that we are the bearers of the bread of life. I believe that we are the spirits that need to go forth and share that bread of life in the world and to remind the world that indeed God is good and life is sacred. Life is sacred. So today, as we share in this brief message so we can have Holy Communion, I want to ask you to do me a favor and be mindful as you take in this feast of what you have coming in the week to come and how each one of those moments can indeed be sacred. How each meal you share in, be it at work, be it at school, be it with, with your wife at, at coffee in the morning or your husband coffee in the morning, it is a sacred moment, and Jesus is with you there, ready to take over your life and your life experience and bring hope into the world, to cover grace, to cover us with grace, and to realize, help us all realize that love indeed is the truth that everybody 
needs. Sometimes we let our calendars, sometimes we let our lives, our schedules, and what we have going on get in the way of the sacred. Well, today, my friends, it's not going to work anymore because you have access to the bread of life. The feast is here. I am worthy, amazingly enough, of this feast, of this abundance, of God's grace and love. You are worthy of this incredible feast. We have to open ourselves up right here, right now, to receive this gift. And together we can make every table a sacred place, simply by sharing the spirit that is shared with us today. Today we're going to share in Holy Communion by intention. What does that mean? That means we're going to invite you to come down, those who are able, come down here. We'll share, we'll give you a piece of bread, dip it into the cup, partake, and then return to your seats for prayer and reflection. There are a lot of you here, and we are on a time schedule, so we also have communion that can come to you. So in the event the line is too long or in the event you just want to have communion where you're seated at that table with your families, with your friends, just let us know and we will serve you right where you are. If you are ready to let the sacred take over in your life, then we have the meal that will help you do that. Jesus left us this meal as a reminder to all of us that his love is greater than the conditions of this world. He left us this feast to remind us that if we share in this, we're never going to hunger nor thirst again. And in fact, we will have energy to transform the world with the power of his love. All who are here are invited to partake in this feast. As I said before, you don't have to be a member of this church. And in fact, you can even be gluten-free because we have a little gluten-free uh, bread for you as well here today. Because all people are welcome here and Rhonda is the bearer of the gluten-free uh, bread because she too is gluten-free. So uh, you are welcome to share in this feast. You are welcome to very intentionally take in the bread of life, the cup of life, so you never hunger nor thirst again. I want you to be very intentional as you come to ask indeed that that be the spirit that fills you and sends you forth for sacred moments in the week to come. For we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in a large upper room. He took bread and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks to God and then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to his friends. He said, take and eat of this, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat, remember me and my love for you. Jesus also took the cup, lifted it to heaven, and gave thanks to God. Then he said to his disciples, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, remember me. Remember I am with you, and life is indeed sacred. For these gifts, let us pray. Holy God, we come into your presence now, recognizing indeed that life gets in the way. Remind us that you will never leave us to face our trials alone. Help us to share in this feast in a manner that reminds us that your love, grace, mercy abounds. Remind us that sin is forgiven through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are heirs of love and life eternal. Amen.